Hello everyone, uh, this is Devin Adams. Thank you for watching this video. Um, we got done with the Fortnite class not that long ago, and there were several of you that wanted a video about GNS and getting it configured in, uh, in the Fortnite products. So first and foremost, I'd like to apologize for the delay. I was getting this laptop, this brand new laptop set up, and uh, I thought what a great opportunity to actually show you an installation from nothing. So that way, you know, there's no magic or smoke and mirrors or anything like that. Um, also, my my audio wouldn't work. So uh, I lost a couple of days there. So anyways, just thanks for your patience. And like always, I, I never sleep enough. So I, I apologize for the rambling. Uh, but here we go. Uh, let's go ahead and dive into this. So I just made a real quick PowerPoint presentation to show you guys what GNS3 is and how it works. Uh, I wanted to do this because there was some confusion. Uh, there always is about exactly what's going on with the topology. So uh, let's go ahead and look at what GNS3 is. So when I was using um, uh, different programs to help study for my CCNA from way long ago, uh, there was a program called Packet Tracer, and it was from Cisco, and it was an amazing product. You could drag routers, you could drag all these different devices into essentially a live topology map, and uh, you would see uh, the packet traces, and you can configure IP addresses. Well, uh, Packet Tracer was just a simulation in other words, it was a program that was created to feel like it was the real equipment, but there was actually nothing behind the scenes that was making it work. There was no kind of emulation. So right off the bat, GNS3 is an emulator. It is not a simulator. So these devices that you're seeing in your topologies uh, that you configure here are real devices. So they are using uh, virtualization to essentially drag and drop deployments here and we can do this for testing environments i do this all the time to teach my classes and it's not just for net i also do it for my server classes i also do it for my networking and security classes so uh, as a testing environment it, it's great all right also any connection here can be uh, sniffed right away with wireshark and uh, essentially it's a playground right and uh, you can also save the configurations because they are using real images and then implement those in production after everything looks okay. So uh, if you guys are serious about getting GNS3 used in production, I highly advise everyone to go out there to GNS3. There is uh, videos, there's trainings, there's forms. Uh, it took me a little bit over, I, I'm thinking about 40 hours of playing around over the course of a few months to get it just the way I wanted it to. But I'm going to show you here in just a few videos of how to at least get it up and running so you have something tangible. So, But that's what GNS3 is essentially an emulator that is uh, doing virtualization deployments. All right. So how this works is GNS3, the client itself, uh, you can have actual servers of GNS3 that are remote, and you can remote into them with several clients. I never dived that deep into it. But uh, the, the client app itself, you kind of almost look at it as a front end. So a front end is like a, a top management platform. And what's really happening here, especially if you're running... Um, if you're running your devices in Windows or Mac OS, uh, they do not have what's known as native uh, KVM hardware acceleration. So what we do here is we have um, machines that we configure. These machines are images that have been formatted to work with QEMU, which is Quick Emulator. The hypervisor for QEMU is KVM, which is the kernel-based virtualization. So we download the app, we download the GNS3 VM, uh, specifically in my case, I used Workstation. It nests the virtualization, so we get hardware acceleration here. And so when I drag and drop a machine, the GNS application itself talks to the server and it spins up the virtual machine using KVM. So um, you can actually get native support on Linux. In other words, you don't need this middle man here. I have just not taken the time to uh, uh, dive into it that deep. All right. So, but that's how it works. And so when you click on these machines, we are simply just uh, using something like VNC. 
if it's if it's GUI based or we're using um, just command line. So it makes a serial connection back to the device. So it's literally like we're consoled into the device itself. Um, it's pretty slick. It's pretty slick. So, but all we really see once it's configured is the top end and the the actual uh, topologies that we create. So. All right, so I'm going to get out of the slide here in just a moment and start the real video. But before you begin, some things that you need to take into consideration. So you are doing client-based visualization. So you're going to need a PC that has quite a bit of RAM and cores on your processor and hard drive space. And that is because we are going to be carving up our system to give to our hypervisor to dish out to GNS3. So. Um, I'm pretty stoked because I got an old new laptop, however you say that, that actually has 32 gigs of RAM and also eight cores. So no longer do I have to remote into some uh, server. I can carry around my GNS with me. So if you do not have a very powerful system, you can still give it a shot. Uh, but I promise you it's not going to be as good of an experience, all right? Especially the space, too. You can fill up a lot of hard drive space doing any kind of virtualization. Now, thankfully, KVM deployment does do base images, so multiple deployments are just differentiated from that base image. So it does a pretty good job keeping things small, but it can still fill up pretty fast. All right, guys. Now, for our client uh, um, software, we need a host operating system. So if you're on Mac OS or MS Windows, you're going to want to use VMware. So VMware Workstation or Fusion is going to be your two choices there. Or there's even an option to use ESXi. Here I'm going to use Workstation because I own a copy of it. And it is made for client-size visualization, but I've had plenty of people use ESXi. ESXi just as well, all right? And then Fusion is just the Macintosh flavor of Workstation, all right? And the reason why they recommend VMware because it does that nesting hardware acceleration. It can pass the virtualization code on through the, the host machine directly to the hardware, all right? Now, if you are very familiar with Linux uh, uh, and you have yourself some kind of like Ubuntu or CentOS, feel free trying this without the VM part of it, download GNS3, and in a, in a Linux environment, you're supposed to get native KVM support. So it still runs all the same commands. It just eliminates the middleman. That's on my bucket list. I'm going to do that one of these days. All right. Um, also, because we are going to be um, showing how to do this with Fortinet products, you obviously need an active Fortinet support contract to go to their support website, download the virtual machines to put into GNS3. OK, other than that, um, uh, VMware does cost a little bit. You can get it uh, discounted through GNS3's website. The Linux based route would be 100 percent free. And obviously, our support contract is just simply you need a support login to get those virtual machines. So essentially, you can do this for little to next to nothing, depending on who's paying for the Fortinet support contract. So um, there's also flavors of all three of these that are trial based and free too. All right. And lastly, just have some patience. So um, I know that uh, it can get a little bit frustrating. Uh, doing a lot of this mumbo jumbo stuff at first, but it starts clicking and I promise you you'll get through it and you'll have a pretty neat tool to better yourself as a technician. So, all right, guys, that is it for my little quick introduction. Uh, I mentioned in an email not that long ago that I would be doing this in segments. So I am teaching um, full time. So I, I do these after or before class. So it's either dead early or dead late. Um, so that's the end of the first one. So the next video is going to be me jumping right into getting GNS3 and getting it working with VMware. So I'll see you guys then. Thanks.